let's turn this into this. But before we do that, if you watched episode 1 of my blog, you will remember that I didn't uh, manage to finish painting all of the Blitzkrieg German infantry set. Well, I have now finished painting and basing all of the miniatures. This took me a lot longer than I had planned. The only thing uh, left to do is put a few more of the water slide transfers on and coat them in varnish. I did have a minor problem with some of the basing material that started to peel off, but I soon worked out what the issue was. Where I had been watering down my paint to use as almost a wash, I had washed away some of the PVA glue. To fix this, I just used more glue and less water in the paint. And back to the main video. Hello, my name is Gareth, and this is my second video documenting my journey into Warlord Games Bolt Action. First, I'd like to say a big thank you to all those that have subscribed and liked my last video. The response has been amazing and something that I could never have wished for. I am really very grateful and have found the comments and suggestions really helpful with my project. In the previous episode, I started my bolt action journey by buying a single box of Blitzkrieg German infantry. They have been now put together and painted and I am adding to them with the Blitzkrieg German support group. This seemed like a logical next purchase and gives you options that are not available in the infantry box set. Within this set you get 10 metal miniatures, uh, 2 officers, 1 medic, 1 radio operator or spotter, 1 3 man mortar team and 1 3 man medium machine gun team. You also get some plastic bases. This will be my first real time uh, that I've worked on metal miniatures. All of my previous 40k armies have been plastic or resin. This is with the sole exception of a single uh, metal Ministorum priest uh, in my Imperial Guard army. I remember that not being my favourite model to work on, so we'll see how this goes. Just like the Blitzkrieg Infantry Kit, uh, this set comes with no instructions. However, it was not uh, a problem at all. Most of the models come as a single piece, and the bits that do need gluing are fairly obvious. I think that the fact that they come practically put together will speed up uh, getting them tabletop ready. And now onto the building. This is the first time that I've put together uh, metal minis and in doing some research it was suggested to use a file instead of a hobby knife uh, when you want to remove the mould lines. So I went on Amazon and got a cheap set of needle files. Considering that they did come as one piece, they did actually need a fair amount of work done to them, from getting rid of the mould lines and smoothing down rough edges. These models have obviously been moulded and cast out of metal, but I have no idea if I'm supposed to wash them, uh, like you are with resin miniatures, to get rid of any releasing agents that still may be on the model. Anyway, I didn't, and I think they've turned out fine, but if anyone does know the answer, um, could you please let me know? Annoyingly, 
the officer with the SMG got broken during prep. Admittedly, it was me that broke it, um, but some of the bits are so brittle that they snapped off really easily. To base coat the miniatures, I used Citadel's Mechanica Standard Grey. These needed a few more coats than the plastic ones, um, and there were quite a few hard to reach areas. And now onto the painting. For paints, I used the same paints and washes that I used in the previous episode. Um, the only thing that I did add was some Sterland Battlemire uh, Technical um, from Citadel uh, for the basing of the support weapons. I found painting these metal miniatures slightly more difficult than I did with the plastic ones. I found that if you dropped one of them, which unfortunately I did a few times, then the paint would chip off uh, really easily. Also they seemed very unforgiving, any bit that was missed by the base coat um, or paint uh, would shine through from the bright metal. These definitely needed a few more coats of paint than the plastic ones. For the bases of the support weapons, I used Sterland Battlemire Technical from Citadel. Um, this was the first time I used it, uh, after I saw someone else using it on Instagram and really liked the results. I wanted to use some sticks that I found in the garden. Uh, I covered them in PVC glue to stop the moisture getting into the wood. I then sprayed them with varnish and coated them in Reitland Flesh Shade to give them more of a reddish colour. I originally wanted to put the MMG in a sandbag placement, but uh, I like the way that this has turned out with the logs. And here we are. I am pleased with the finished miniatures. Um, if I had to pick, I would say that I slightly prefer plastic to metal, but there was something nice about these models, and I definitely won't be put off uh, from buying metal miniatures in the future. In the end, I managed to finish uh, one officer, the radio operator and the MMG and mortar teams, I have left to do um, the second officer with the SMG. Um, I'll do that once I've fixed the snapped off barrel. And I have left the medic uh, because I would like to put him on a larger base with a bit more of a diorama. Both boxes have more or less been finished, minus a few finishing touches. That has left me with, I think, at least three infantry squads. An officer, a spotter or radio operator, and two support weapons teams. In my next video, I will be putting together some French infantry. Based on the really helpful comments on my first video, I will now uh, go with War Games Atlantic French infantry. I have enjoyed working on this kit, but I'm not yet keen to have a go at 30 metal French infantry and the War Games Atlantic box is in plastic. What I am not sure on is what I should add to my German force next. I have been looking at uh, transports or maybe a motorcycle MMG, but I am not really sure what would make a good next edition, um, and any suggestions would be most welcome. Thank you for watching, and in the next episode we turn to the French.